Um, I have a few games out right now that I'm looking for players for. Let me list these real oh. fast. And if you're interested, send me. Whoops, that was the wrong thing. That was definitely the YouTube thing. Uh, if you're interested, just send me a message on Twitter or Twitch or YouTube. I have a Monday night game of Stars Without Numbers that I'm looking for at least three more players for. Uh, there's a fantastic space based RPG that's uh, pretty easy to get into. And it's completely sandbox. That's Monday at 8. I'm looking for some more, at, at least one more person, possibly for a Friday night rain of winter. That would be twice a month at 8 p.m. EST. That would be Pathfinder. Looking for a guest. So people will show up once or twice for the Hub campaign, which is D&D 5e sandbox on Thursday nights. And... Uh, one more person for Jade Regent Tuesdays at 8. And that is Pathfinder as well. So if you're interested in any of those, send me a message anywhere that you've found me at. And uh, if those games haven't started yet, I'll see if I can get you in. So, let's get back to things, shall we? Let's pull up the Pendragon here. And where do we leave off? You guys were just about to begin the feast. <clears throat> so I apologize. I know I haven't been super prepared with this book. I think if you guys have looked through it, the book kind of bounces around a lot. It's not super great as a reference material. And there's a lot of yes. one-shot exemptions. Once you kind of get down to it, it's it's just like Pathfinder. Like once you've used it a couple times, it's a lot easier. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Let's see. Uh, you have the feast this night. The porter, the man in charge of letting people through the door, recognizes Sir Elid and allows you to go through, and you come with him. All of you can make courtesy rolls right here to see if you have properly attired yourself for the feast. Yeah, Anash, if you're back, you can Okay. Back. Yeah. I'm eating some cereal, so I don't want to be oh, eating on fine. camera. that's fine. That's <laughs> fine. Uh, Not everyone can drink rum on camera like I can. Someone else has failed a roll. Yep. Mm. Look at this courtesies. It's uh. so good. Oh, I better switch it to the camera view so everyone can see you guys tank this shit. Yep. Robert, fortunately has uh, properly dressed himself. He's got his suit and tie on. He's got his colors on properly. The rest of you, you know, you've got dirt and mud. You probably have, like, your family's house crest, like, sewed upside down on your, your uh, equipment. Are we missing somebody? We're missing Sermon. Oh, there he we go. He was are. here, but... Right. He needs to make a courtesy roll as well. Sorry, I did. It's just my internet is terrible tonight. It's... Uh, not mine, well, really, so once we figure that out, uh, Sir Elid is announced as Marshal of Castle Vagon and waits oh, at the wow. back of the hall where the Herald <laughs> calls Sir Elid for it. Wow, that's so weird. It did the emote for you rolling courtesy, but didn't actually roll it. Yeah, it, it, that is weird. Weird internet here. Try rolling it again, and we'll see if it goes through. <clears throat> the Herald announces each of you as squires, and announces Sir Elliot as Marshal. Okay, yeah, you There you probably. go. Yep. <clears throat> so actually, Anosh, you can mark down a experience point for courtesy. Because this is an extremely important event. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> They drag the two living bandits forth to be turned over to the Earl. And the Earl asks for your, your party's explanation of what has happened. But as he asks for that explanation, you notice he's humming the song that's... <laughs> so he's like... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and then I kicked him in the gut. <laughs> Is there anyone that would like to present your... Um, your would events? that be oratory or... 
justice. Ye- oratory would be fine. Justice would would be if you were specifically just going to talk about the bandits. Um, I'll do oratory. Okay. All right. So you you kind of do one of those Jeffrey Chaucer or are you not entertained? Like you try to get the whole crowd behind it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, Lady Gwenna is, like, looking at Robert, looking at Aurelius. The other three handmaidens there are all like, oh, that reminds me. So, uh, we get the, the other three women who you haven't identified, and then we get a flashback to when Dobbins was talking to the servants. I was looking for rumors. Right. So, like, this is right before the commercial break. And, uh, let's go here. Oh, I gotta find the thing. You know what? I knew there was a reason why I left myself on that page. And then I moved away from it like a fool. Um, Is it the rumor page? No, it's not the rumor page. It's the page for that lists all the people in Sarum. So, uh, I've got that up. There we go. Okay, so... Uh, Ask, quick question. For passing oratory, can I put a check? Um... I'll say yes, because you're presenting it to your lord. Okay. Normally, when you ask to do a skill, you, you don't normally get a check, but I'll give it because it's such an important event and you did well. Um, so, you're speaking with Dobbin, this servant. You've seen many like him. You know, he's got slick, long black hair, and every so often he runs his hands through it and, like, flips it over the back. So, it's like he's taken... You've seen nobles do this, so it's like he's pretending to be one. And it's uh. so aggrandizing and self-loving. Everyone around him loathes him, but this is the kind of person you, you feel perfect talking to because you know he's trying to move up in the world. And he's like, well, I'll tell you what I heard about the Lady Adwin. I was talking to her, her, uh, her chauffeur the other day, and they said that her father was killed recently. Yes, the Lady oh Adam has four knights at her call. They owe her loyalty because of her father, and she has two more manners, both of whom are giving their incomes now directly to Earl Roderick. Anyone who could bed the lass would be entitled to become a banneret lord. Indeed, it would take a hardy knight indeed. And then he points at... Uh, he points at the woman sitting next to at Lady Adwin and says, Yes, that's that's Lady Elaine. You know, I heard that she took a lover, and the lover killed her husband. Very suspicious. The priests say that some foul trickery was involved. She may be a witch. Ah, oh, you need not say anything more of her. And, and he says, no, but I must. You see, they consider her an uncultured country hussy. But she has four manners to her name. Yes, a wealthy prize indeed. Hair swish. He says, I... And so you should know that both Lady Adwin and Lady Elaine both have 18 appearances. He says, I would marry that in an instant were Earl Roderick to give me permission. And then finally he points to this 40-year-old woman who, I mean, 40 years old in this time is very old. And she's appearance eight, so she's like less than normal. But she's wearing very expensive clothing, and she's escorted by uh, two knights over her shoulder. And they both have the emblem of a dog on their shoulder. He says, that is Lady Indag, and those are her two lovers. You see, she is extremely wealthy, and she has been married twice, and both of them have died. And now, she can choose to love whomever she wants and marry, and so she keeps those two knights on a leash and has them in fife. But, she also has three more manners. If she were to marry, you could call five knights to your, your banner, should she choose you. It's said that she's looking for a dashing young knight to keep her company. And he does the hair swish again and says, Have you heard of this Aurelius? It seems he's knighted today. He seems like prime candidate for one of her little toys. Perhaps I... he will take the dog. 
I very much agree. I would love to be the middle man in this kind of arrangement. You did say that two two husbands died at her. Oh yes, uh, with her. Ah, oh, tragedy. I'm sure no, nothing of that sort would ever happen to Aurelius. <laughs> I would just become melancholy for an entire year. <laughs> yeah. You just become a pet. <laughs> so, and then we cut back to uh, Aurelius, like, giving his uh, speech. And he orates it out. <laughs> Lady Indic, yes, that is the correct way to spell it. The Earl is pleased and thanks you, asking about the bandits that were killed and the manner that they were killed. The word spreads about Sermon's lack of honor, but he is still highly regarded as a soon-to-be knight, and Earl Roderick announces that you are all to be knighted in the morning, and that you should prepare for your vigil. And uh, here is Earl Roderick. So his coat of arms is a field of gold and blue bars, which again, on my matrilineal line, is the McCoy clan. The game creator stole our coat of arms. Prosperity and wealth. Clan McCoy, represent. Oh, are you guys on the wrong page? Whoops. Yeah, we're not seeing it. My apologies. Yeah. Ah, now we see him. There you go. Yeah. So, Earl Roderick offers you use of his chapel for the night. It, it is open to all faiths, but it is, of course, British Christian. And uh, asks that you stand the vigil and prepare in the morning for knighthood. Wait, do we get any floating at the party, or do we have to wait? Pagans still, you know, you would go to the chapel and you would contemplate upon the mysteries of the world and your connection with your gods or goddesses. You still stay in the God's vigil, wood. it's just not a Christian vigil. Right. Yeah, so Robert like lights a little fire if he can, and like prays to the fire and like the wind so and you're, all that you're, stuff. So when he the says elements. to take a vigil, you like immediately leave the hall and go take up your vigil? You don't like stay and get a drink or No, something? no, I stayed, that's what I said, like later. Oh. I, was, I was wondering, can we party and like having the women and stuff? This is like yeah. Robert's thing. Yeah, you still get to party until midnight when you have to begin your vigil. Yeah. All right. Okay. I sing my remake <laughs> of my song. Okay. Has All it? Right. Make a new Kurama? make a new singing role. Go ahead. All right. Kurama, have you told us the stuff that you know about these women and like any of these rumors? Um, in a in a miscued way, I would have. Okay. And did you tell like uh, Roderick so, Moa Jennifer? Moa is going to seek to uh, dance with uh, some of the ladies. Uh, Aurelius. Yes. Uh, I was. Yes. Uh, I, I was speaking the other day, uh, just y yesterday actually, um, and I heard some rumors about uh, a lovely, a, a dashing, dashingly slightly elder woman, but mature, uh, who is seeking uh, a man, and she has many uh, a dashing young man, such as yourself, actually. Uh, she has many knights to her name at her beck and call, and uh, mature though she is, she would be an excellent uh, addition to your family, I'm certain. Yeah. Her name is Lady in Indig. <laughs> ah, well, appreciated, but uh, I have my heart set on another, uh, and I'm going to... Uh, okay, go so we cut then... Like, you guys are having a conversation. The camera pans around. Sermon is just, like, doing this amazing performance. There's a little song and dance with it. And then you're oh. approached by the final young woman who was not identified yet. And she looks up at you. She's actually crying slightly, Sermon. And she says, your singing is so beautiful, Sir Knight. Can I call you Sir Knight? You may. She says, <laughs> I... I must tell you, I have been unlucky in love. The last four of those who have attempted to court me have all died on the battlefield shortly after announcing their passion for me. Will you tempt fate 
and carry my favor? I fear no death and shall carry your favor with honor. Okay, so she says, that is good to hear. You see, the priests say that I am not cursed, I am just unlucky. I am Lady Gwynna. Because oh, you haven't really well, seen yeah. her, right? I mean, everyone else has been paying attention to her, but you haven't really been talking to her. Oh, snap. <laughs> so Lady Gwynna approaches you because of your amazing song. <laughs> She's hot, right? Yep. 16 appearance? 16 appearance. Not bad. So, Robert, like, you glance over while this is happening. Do you want to make an awareness roll to see if this is happening? I guess everyone can make an awareness roll, right? Because Dobbins, you yeah. know that she was crushing on Robert for a while, mm -hmm. and then she was she was crushing on Aurelius, and then and then Robert, and now Sermon. She gets Oops, around. Out of the way. <laughs> okay, no, so Dobbins, she's interested in Aurelius. You, you're, yeah. you notice it, obviously. You know, like Robert mm -hmm. his eyes pass over it. Aurelius is like looking for someone in the crowd, and Dobbins is like, "Yep, that's happening." <laughs> yeah. So she hands you a handkerchief that has her family colors on it, Sermon. And she says, please, please, I beg you, do not die in the first battle that you encounter. Come back to me, Sir Knight, that we may spend more time singing and dancing together. I will come back for your hand, my lady. <laughs> okay, uh, and then we cut back to Aurelius. Who are you looking for? Um, I'm gonna... I'd like to uh, dance with uh, Lady Edwin. Okay. All right. So you're seeking out Lady Edwin. Can you make a courtesy roll? So, right. like, you approach her, but she's, like, she's talking with the Lady Ellen, uh, or Roderick's wife. She's got, like, a whole... <sighs> yeah. The, the handmaidens kind of block you off. You're like, Lady Edwin! Lady Edwin! Over here! And, and she's, she just pretends not to hear you. And some of the other younger women kind of block you off. And, whoa, Aurelius! I would be pleasurable to dance with you! And she just, Who's Lady she, Edwin? She pulled, no, no, not Lady Edwin. Just one of the lesser handmaidens just pulls Aurelius onto the dance floor. And begins Who's doing Edwin? like a foxtrot. Alright, so... Oh, dance that's a sarcastic thing. Can you make a dance roll? Okay, yes. alright. You, you're... You do well enough, you know. You know, it's not like you're the the man or anything, but you do enough to not embarrass yourself. And the uh, the lady like takes your hand and says, "Ah, you dance very well, Aurelius. I look forward to meeting with you again." My name is Paige. That's a page with a Y. I am. I I am the handmaiden to Lady Edwin. And then she she kind of waits and sees if you do anything while she's standing there. I, uh, I thank her uh, and say, it was a pleasure as well. I look forward to uh, encountering you again. However, I must depart from my vigil soon. Okay, so she skips away and returns to her circle of handmaidens, where <clears throat> immediately after she arrives, there is a burst of laughter. Let's cut to Dobbins. What are you doing? I mean, you've been watching things, right? But what are you doing during the feast? I, I seek Lady Indig. I see. Okay, you seek out Lady Indig. <laughs> um, what is your appearance? Uh, I believe it is... Eleven. Okay, and what age are you? Twenty-two. Oh, right, you're the young one. Okay, so you approach <laughs> Lady Indig and her two uh, dog knights both kind of like step forward and she waves them aside and like three more knights bearing the patch of the dog step up behind you to kind of like encircle you around her and then they all face outwardly and you get the <laughs> idea that you're within like a privacy barrier and she's like... <sighs> I am the Lady Indig. I believe you're called Dobbins, correct? Yes, I am Squire she, Dobbin at the moment. She says, I... come forward, I want to take a look at you. Mm. Very well. So she I... kind of like grabs your cheek and is like pinching it and she's like, good flesh here, good flesh. 
I know someone who's is better. How many summons do you have behind you, boy? Twenty-one at the moment, I believe. Because wait, is it the, this the winter coming? Yeah, or? twenty-one. Yeah, this is the summer coming. So yeah. summer is yeah, coming. <laughs> summer is coming. <laughs> this is a weird thing to say. Yes. Summer is so uh, she says, uh, "Oh, I see. Twenty-one years behind you, then." Ah. Hmm. Had much experience doing tumbles in the hay with the uh, the girls around your manor. I uh, can't say I have. I, I'm always ah uh, ah uh, shit. I'm always a little bit guarded about uh, who they've been with. Don't want any conspicuous rumors going about and whatnot. So she, at first she's like, Ugh, you're not gonna take a version. Then you're like, don't want any of the STDs or something like that. She's like, okay, I can understand that. Well, you seem like a smart young lad. Why would you want to speak with me, Squire Dobbin? I have uh, heard some rumors that you are seeking a, uh, a another a suitor. I wouldn't say another. Oh God, that's the worst thing to start out with. So she says, <laughs> "Yes, I am seeking another suitor. Do you offer yourself?" Uh, I would, but I believe myself to be inadequate in the uh, in the. When up compared so to my, she just kind of starts. She like coughs on her. Very, her, very modest. Her, uh, here. Wine. She's compared, like, ha, 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 <laughs> scoff, scoff. Compared to uh, my companion Aurelius, who I'm certain you've heard of. Before. So when you mention Aurelius, two of the knights that are currently forming the barrier, keeping everyone else away, sort of like shift in their armor. You hear it creak. It's pretty clear that they're unhappy to near the name Aurelius. <laughs> One of them reaches like for his belt to like grab a sword that isn't there because you can't be armed in your, <laughs> your lord's hall. And and another one of them sighs and is like fucking Aurelius. <laughs> <laughs> Why do Lady Indig is like, oh my, you seek Aurelius has given you leave to court me. Not necessarily, but I uh, I would seek to. Uh, what do you? What's the, what's the word for trying to? to unify our houses, an yes, I, I I believe that Aurelius would seek very uh, much the how of your house, and I'm certain that you see much to be desired in Aurelius. She says, "Indeed, I do." But didn't I see him scampering off with some young mage but a moment ago? Are you going to let that stop you? Well, I ask loyalty of my dog knights. I will not have some man who simply wanders off with any fresh maid, fresh off of the uh, the county way. Uh, could... If I am to marry again, he will belong to me entirely. <laughs> and right now he belongs to no one, so that is clearly why he is scampering around. She looks at you for a moment and it takes out a fan and fans it out and says, I believe he belongs to what lies between his legs. <laughs> All five of the knights that are standing around are all just like shaking their heads. And one of them is like, I can't believe that I have pledged myself to this woman. <laughs> uh, she hits him with the fan. She's like, oh, Joffrey. I like this lady. Uh, could, could I have... I, I guess I didn't ask more about uh, what happened to them previously, so... Uh, the husbands? Yeah, yeah. You could ask now. I'm not gonna ask I now. think you're a bit too guarded to ask that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not going to ask now. Not with, not with so many knights surrounding me. I imagine I'm like, my hand's on my where my dagger would be normally too. Just not, not, to, not to threaten anybody. You can but just carry look. your dagger in here, right? Because it would oh, that, be like a steak knife or something. Uh, definitely not on it, but every time I look at the knights, my hand kind of reflexes a little bit. Because they're, wow. they're, they're very Wow, do you honestly boring. feel threatened in your lord's house? By the knights. Okay, all right. They're not of my family yet. So so when she sees this, she like starts hitting the knights and she's like, Oh, very well then. Knights go away. You're upsetting the lad. He does not have the fortitude of a true knight yet. Perhaps the knight's vigil shall give him what his virginity does not. <laughs> <laughs> and she dismisses the knights and they they just shake their heads and wander off and all five of them together go to the bar.